Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Having a blast like usual. Uh, thank you all for some incredible comments. I'm, I'm being so made aware of so much out there, and it's it's wonderful, especially in the in the metalcore and the rock and the prog rock. That's really truly my soul as a listener. But as a composer, I've written so many styles for so many situations in media, TV, film, you know, video games, whatever, that I love to see what's going out there, especially with technology and today, hence the old guy, meaning 50 years ago, we didn't have this opportunity to find new music. We were hand-fed Pavlovian corporate radio gaga. Uh, this has been wonderful. Today, I'm going to kind of go into another kind of uh, progressive jazz fusion. Um, direction. This is called Dirty Loops. I had a few people say you got to check this out. It's called Work Shit Out. Um, we're going to start in just a second. Uh, as always, I say if any advertisements pop up on this, it's not me. I don't monetize my videos. They copyright claim it and the owners of the music are allowed to run ads if they choose. And, um, and that's it. So let's go ahead. Give me a second to set up here on my technicals and uh, let's go. I said technicals. Technicals, not... I'm <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, if I don't say it clear. All right, here we go. Stand by. All right. I better work shit out, but I like it too much. Spending all my money like I just can't get enough. I better work shit out, but it's killing my bus. Sending all my sorrows till I just can't kill a brush. I got the sunlight. You bring the rain. I'm gonna drop, but if I fall out, then I got no one to be to blame. Still, I got the sparkle. I'm soaking up the heat. Cause I know I should resist, but I'm so good for the kiss so sweet. Hey. I better work shit out, but I like it too much. Spending all my money like I just can't get enough. I better work shit out, but it's killing my buzz. Sending all my sorry still, I just can't get my brush. I better work shit out, but I like it too much. Spending all my money like I just can't get enough. I better work shit out, but it's killing my buzz. stop okay wow <laughs> I was not expecting that I didn't really kind of know what to expect I was familiar with um, I think his name is Heinrich he's the bass player I've seen some of his videos uh, in bass clinic kind of stuff and um, it's just I already know he's amazing um, this vocalist I, I've never uh, dirty loops I've never seen uh, this band or I'm familiar with this vocalist what a voice I've always been in awe of these kind of voices, the Robert Plants, the Steve Perrys, um, you know, everybody who has these naturally high, powerful voices that can do what they want with it. Um, now, on a, on a composer's point of view, which is what this is all about, um, I thought it was really nice that they started it with a sequence of, uh, so it's, it's, it's a rhythmical sequence, but it's synthesized, and that's that ding, 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 ding that you heard in the back as it was starting it as a rhythmic pattern. Um, it also, kind of set this nuanced tone that um, the song might be, since I'm only a, a minute and a half into it, might be around, in the particular key that they're in, they might use that note, that tone, as the root for some of their changes. So if you notice, in his hook, he was in one note. Da, 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 da. That was his hook. The music was moving around it. And also the bass is supporting that. So I don't know, we're gonna get through the rest of the song. Another thing that I noticed is there was, um, it sounded like some pad work that was supporting the piano. Piano playing is unbelievable. The drummer, well, uh, I'm gonna probably have to get through more of the song, but uh, his chops are absolutely sick. And 
I, I know when I'm reacting to a song like this, it might not be that for you know some of the people who like what I do, who are subscribed to my channel, in the metalcore, prog rock, and stuff like that. But I, I believe there's probably going to be a crossover appreciation for the musicianship, because as musical as this is, seemingly so far, almost every every band I think I've only done four or five has the same level of six skills and and creativity. I mean, sometimes I'll look at this and say, well, what happens if I put in a you know, a fully uh, octave, or not an octave, a whole step down, you know, full drop metal thing pu punching behind this. This kind of an arrangement can change it all the way up. So I think there might be a little bit of a cross appreciate appreciation for it. So let's, let's go and listen and see what else these guys got. Okay, this sounds like this next session is going to get really trippy, but I wanted to bring something up arrangement-wise here. When, when you have a key that you're playing in, and, I, and remember, I'm only doing the composer's reaction. I don't know how or what they're... I'm not there. I'm not looking at the score or at the music or anything. I'm just based off of what I'm hearing. In that last passage of the last minute, there were some multiple arrangements going on in there. Um, obviously, um, written most likely by the keyboardist in support of his incredible piano work thus far. There's some pad work there. I also heard some other supporting sequencing in the back, you know, that are pulled down in the mix. And a lot of the times, a lot of times in my experience as a composer, when I've layered different arrangements, um, you know, sometimes they're so subtly placed in certain areas that the end listener uh, doesn't pull, doesn't extract that as something that they're focusing on listening to because they're enjoying the complete body of work as you know, sonic ear candy, you know, so you don't sit there and want to say, gee, I wonder if this, uh, you know, what am I tasting out of this Snickers bar? Am I getting the nougat? Am I, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like bite into it and enjoy it. But as a composer's, you know, point of view, I can deeply appreciate the arrangements that were put in. Um, once again, I'm only assuming, uh, but it almost sounds like it was probably by this piano player. Looks like we're going to go into some kind of a spacey section here. So I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Oh my gosh, you guys have been teaching me how to do this and I forgot, like I can press a key and I'll do it, but I'll do it next time, sorry. But I am reading the comments and I'm trying, so here we go. I'm just going to bring it back here. And... Alright, let's just see what happens. Beautiful bass sound. Hear the sequence? Chills. You got, you got to stop and say something about that. Um, in, in the way they are taking you through this journey here, you know, starting it off with this really very powerful entrance, you know, four on the floor drum kick, you know, just to get you into this kind of this pop drive kind of thing. And then, of course, they totally, uh, you know, Michelin food level rhythmical arrangements, uh, 
if you caught that inference, that, that thing there. Um, the, I, I, I don't want to go too much into what he's playing, how he's playing, because I, I like to just be simple composer here so the folks that are listening, I don't want to get into, let the piano players and arrangers get into the deeper part of what this guy's doing. But he is moving you sonically with his playing by doing very unique things where he's going, where he would be in one key. I'm just going to say a key. Let's say he's in the key of, of A. And then what happens is he's doing his beautiful work here. And then he'll half step the right hand work that he's doing, but still be holding this A because then it becomes a different structure of a chord. And that, that beautiful detachment um, in playing is what gives you that like <gasps> kind of vibe. His playing skills are unbelievable. He, he seems like he was probably classically trained. I'm, I'm noticing some of the, the fluffiness. <laughs> you know, classical trainers have, uh, musicians sometimes have a certain way of playing. Guys, absolute monster. Another thing I want to bring up before I move forward. Um, in this section, they really brought up this beautiful, it sounds, I want, it's going to sound like it's a hall. I think it's a hall reverb. Um, I could be wrong. Probably am. But one thing I noticed is, is that the reverb came up and really bought the piano playing a lot of beautiful space. Um, uh, space without playing. I'll, I'll explain something about that some other time. Anyhow, he filled that in instead of maybe going in and doing an arrangement underneath it with strings or pads by filling that in with the with the reverb unit. Just really, just the beauty of this is just insane. This guy is brilliant. This guy is absolutely brilliant. So stoked that you guys asked me to uh, review this because or react to this because now I'm gonna really dig into this. Okay, here we go. Move it back just a. Uh, a smear here and uh, here we go. So check this out. That that run that he did in the key that he was doing, da, 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 the full kind of block chord playing, where else did we just hear that? We heard, not identical, but the, the mind, the creative mindset. If you guys saw the reaction I did to Lingus, I, I believe, um, I'm, I'm learning the name slowly before, Corey, I think, uh, the, the, the keyboard lead player. Go back and listen to his solo, and there is that same capability I'm not saying that one copied the other one. It's impossible. I've heard my father and my uncle do what Corey and this guy's done 50 years ago, that kind of playing. But it's part of the creative bandwidth that when you get to a particular level, you pull from different ways of playing. And that's a very similar kind of a move there when you're block chord playing with the melody as you're coming through it. So anyhow, I had to bring that up. The bass player is just, he's having a blast. And uh, the drummer, well, I'm, Whatever, here we go. There's that sequence again. <laughs> Looks like they're egging it. Oh, uh oh, here we go.
Oh man, what do you say about that? What do you say about that? You know, that that craftsmanship, that 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 creativity on the drums, and I don't look. It looks like they played that once through. I, you know, videos and stuff you can edit. Guy doesn't even look like he's got a sweat going on. I mean, even if you've got the most epic technique, you know, if you've got your, your game in, there are still arms flailing. You're moving. This guy is not sweating. I don't know, man. But um, I, I don't, I don't have enough that I can possibly say about this drummer to just expand upon anything more than it was an epic, absolutely wonderful display of of uh, creative artistry as a drummer. Um, I came up with the school of Dave Weckl and, all, and narrative Michael Walden from the Jeff Beck Wired album. So I've heard all kinds of, when you hear this level, you just have to sit there and enjoy it. So that's what I just did. I'm sure you have your own opinion about, uh, you know, uh, his playing and stuff, but uh, that was just mind numbing. So looks like the song is coming to an end. You guys are probably stoked about that because I just go. So here we go. Uh, I guess that was it. Oh my god. That's just absolutely nuts. Okay, well, I'm gonna cut it off here. I don't need to roll for, for creds. Well, um, I don't know if I could actually sew up my reaction to this in one particular word or in a statement. Uh, I just think it was an absolute treasure for me and a treat to be exposed. Thanks you guys. You know, this some of these suggestions to come are coming from some of my more hardcore reactions of you know the metalcore and prog rock tool, ginger, you know, and and the sheer respect that I have for musicians like this putting out this kind of music uh, is absolutely um, mind numbing. Thank God with technology because of YouTube and stuff like that we're not funneled down the corporate radio throat like we used to be you can release broad pieces of music like this like Tool does and it could be eight ten minutes long and the experience uh, for the end user could be justifiably glorious because you can get the full piece in instead of a song that has to be chopped down because the record company says it's got to be three and a half minutes for radio play uh, once again these guys are absolutely brilliant I look forward to diving deeper into them uh, I love the arrangements. I'm kind of an arrangement freaker as well as a composer. And so even at the end of that, you can hear that, that the keyboardist, I'm assuming, uh, with some very rich pad arrangements behind it to support the, bottom, uh, the, support the, the dynamics, the richness of the piece. Anyhow, so that's it. I got some uh, great fun stuff coming up around the corner. Uh, thanks for, if you're still here, <laughs> uh, you probably haven't come down yet. You know what I'm talking about. All right, guys, you take care. I'll come back with another one soon. All right.